My name is Chris Storer. I'm a PhD working in Agri. My project is in uh, polymer sensors for the detection of nutrients in agriculture. And my background is in biomedical materials engineering. So my interests are pretty much anything to do with biomimetic materials or anything that copies the way the human body or nature works. So within agriculture, there are three essential macronutrients that you need for crops to grow. And that's N, P and K, so nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. And what farmers traditionally do is they spread fertilizers across the fields to try and enrich the soils with these nutrients. Because without them, you'll get a very poor crop, if any, grow at all. The problem is when you put that fertilizer down or any growth mediums, if you get too much, it becomes a bit of a problem where uh, water supplies become contaminated. So you have things like uh, eutrophication of ponds where they go very dark to all the algae that grows. It stops anything else from surviving in those water supplies. If you put too little down, then you also have a problem where you just won't get that crop yield out and it'll massively hit that farmer's uh, pocket. So what we try to do to address that is create these polymer sensors that can be put in the ground and can measure remotely the amount of nutrients within the soil. So that way you have a very powerful tool for the farmer. He knows just the right amount of nutrient that he needs to put down. I know it saves him a lot of money. He doesn't have to send off samples to labs to get tested. Uh, it saves a lot of time as well, because not only are they expensive, it's very time consuming, it's a very slow process. Instead of having to wait a couple of months, he gets those results back almost straight away. And yeah, so that's precision agriculture. So as part of that research, to make my polymer sensors, I've taken what you call an electronic nose approach. So an electronic nose is just a series of special plastics that are designed to mimic the receptors that you find within your nose. And if you can imagine like on the outside of every cell, you have these like proteins. They only fit specifically to certain chemicals. So what I do is I copy that, I make my plastics, and it's equivalent to taking a piece of a jigsaw and put it into a piece of Play-Doh. We take that piece of jigsaw back out, only that original piece, that unique chemical, will fit back into that hole that we've created. It's the same thing, but on a very small scale. I then spin coat those onto capacitors, which is just a fancy way of saying a, bit, a very thin polymer across a bit of an electronic circuit. And then when my chemical target, or these nutrients, like phosphate for example, binds back onto it, uh, I get an electrical signal out. And I can measure the concentration of that molecule within its environment. And that's how we create these polymer sensors for detecting nutrients in agriculture. So this has been quite an industrially focused PhD project and part of that is through an Innovate UK grant, which is a grant from the UK government, I've been able to work with a company called Saturn Bioponics that are based near the University of Birmingham. And for that they're very interested in producing online hydroponics that control everything that a plant needs. So it gets the perfect temperature, light, nutrient concentration and it's a closed loop as well. Because the way it works is you just have a growth tank that then feeds water into the top of a stack of plants, it filters down giving the plants all the nutrients and nothing gets wasted, all that water goes back around. And they have tanks that dose in new supplies of nutrients each time. So it's perfect for us because we want to create these sensors that can measure nutrients in real time. So by having these sensors put into these tanks, we can then say what nutrients are being depleted and whether certain plants such as strawberries require certain you know, specific nutrients, like say a phosphate or a sulfate dose, at different stages in their growth. So through that, we're able to very precisely control the perfect amount of nutrients for that plant in real time that it needs at each cycle of its growth stage. So part of that is that I've been able to do teaching assistant work. So that means a couple of hours a week I'm able to help out with teaching undergrads. It normally means myself and about 10 to 20 students uh, taking tutorials and things like that. So I've worked on modules for sustainable engineering that's been very interesting and very topical as well for my projects in the agri, as well as other things such as foundation year physics, which has been great for me because it means that I've been able to go back to basics and relearn the key points that I picked up to go into engineering. And it's been very interesting to get to meet a lot of the students and break down these concepts and teach them to them. Another side of it is that I've been able to do tutoring in halls of residences. So that means living in halls of residences. However, you have your own apartment and you do support work for the students, you provide pastoral support and guidance. And a lot of that is a great way of, if you've just come to a new city, you immediately get a new set of friends on your tutor team, and also you get integrated into university life. 
So it means putting on events and things like that for all the students, and that's been a lot of fun this year. Uh, another thing that I've done is sport within the university. So I've helped teach touch rugby classes, and I also play rugby. I played for my Halls residence teams when I was younger, and I've carried that on throughout university. And I've been very supportive of people getting involved in as many team-based sports or any type of sport, really, as possible. I never thought that I'd be able to do are things like you know, conferences and presenting. So part of that was presenting at, um, say, the three-minute thesis final this year, where you have to try and summarize your PhD thesis right down to three minutes and then use one PowerPoint slide. So that's quite an interesting way of trying to make yourself more succinct and really get to know your research, as well as how to get across to an audience in a very interesting way. I've also been to conferences, presented posters. I won a runner-up prize at one of the ones in Cambridge recently at the Census 100 conference. I guess it's just a great way of getting out of the lab and really building those networking skills and collaboration skills. That's been a really fun part of the PhD so far. So at the moment I'm writing up my thesis for my PhD and it's given me a lot of time to reflect on everything I've done over the last few years so far. And really I feel that I've been very lucky to work on such a multidisciplinary project where by going through that I've not just worked in one area, I've been able to collaborate with you know, people and colleagues from across not just the School of Electronic Engineering, but also the Schools of Materials and Chemistry, and especially the uh, Organic Materials Innovation Centre over in Chemistry, for actually building my polymer sensors. I feel like that's a real strength for the University of Manchester, because it means that you're not just isolated working on one thing. You know, it's bounce ideas off other people and there's a lot of support. And so there's a lot of fun techniques and methods that you'd never normally get to try if I wasn't able to do that and go across and collaborate with someone that's working in a very similar area but in a different school and I think that is one of the biggest strengths that Manchester brings to the table.